Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, as we saw earlier in this course, we discussed the ideas of combinatorics, uh, which were first uh, systematized under the notion of pratyayas in uh, Pingala's Chanda Shastra. So, these ideas did develop in various other disciplines, and in the next uh, almost millennia, these ideas became much more uh, uh, complex, but more interesting in different subjects. And we are going to study this in couple of lectures. So, in this lecture we will study combinatorics in the earliest Ayurvedic text, some ideas, then something about uh, combinatorics in the text of Varahimira. Then we will discuss uh, in some greater detail uh, another aspect of prosody. These are called the Matra Vrittas. What uh, Pingala mostly considered were called the Varna Vrastas, the syllabic meters. We shall discuss the combinatorics or the idea of pratyayas in Matra Vrittas, and uh, that will be a fairly detailed discussion and very interesting mathematical ideas do come up in that. So, the ancient treatises of Charaka and Sushruta, they deal with combinatoric questions in relation to various doshas and rasas. The one of the most uh, well known quotation from Charaka is the following, which uh, discusses the 63 possible combinations that can be done from the 6 rasas. So, what are the 6 rasas? The Madhura, Lavana, Amla, Kashaya, Katu, Tikta, these are the 6 and different words are used here in Charaka for each of them at various places. Swadur amla dibhir yogam, sheshaihi amla deh prithak like that. So, bhedas chaisham trishashti vidha vikalpo dravya desha kala prabhavad bhavati tam upadekshyamaha. There are 63 vikalpa, vikalpa is the different possible combinations of these rasas and that is what we are going to discuss in this. So, choosing 2 rasas out of 6, how many will come? Choosing 3 rasas out of 6, how many will come? Choosing 4 rasas out of 6, how many will come? And finally, choosing all the 6 rasas, how many possibilities? Then choosing only 1 rasa also, how many possibilities? So, these are what is discussed in those set of verses of Charaka. So, the 63 combination. So, obviously, 2 rasas can be selected from a group of 6, that is 6 C 2 that turns out to be 15, 3 rasas can be selected in 6 C 3 ways that is 20, 4 rasas is 6 C 4 which is same as 6 C 2, 5 rasas is in 6 C 1 or 6 C 5 that is 6, 1 rasa is selected in 6 ways and when you select all the 6 rasas that is possible only in one way. So, the total is 63 and this is just one particular case of the usual uh, sum of all binomial coefficients n c 1, n c 2, etcetera, n c n is 2 to the power n minus 1, 1 plus 1 to the power n will have all these terms and also the term n c 0. So, without that this is. So, Sushruta Samhita also lists the 63 possibilities, but it does something more, it uh, gives a sequential enumeration of the 63 possibilities, that is something akin to a prastara. Uh, for each set of combinations, they are listed in a particular way. Anyway, we will discuss such prastaras later. Now, going to an entirely different subject, this I uh, hinted in the introductory overview. The discussion in Brahat Samhita of Varahamira, Varahamira is in the 6th century. He wrote the three very important works, Pancha Siddhantika on the Ganita Skanda of Jyotish Shastra, Brahat Jataka on the Jataka Skanda of the Jyotish Shastra and Brahat Samhita and the Samhita Skanda. These are the three different parts of the Vedanga Jyotisha, the Vedanga called Jyotisha. So, in the chapter 76 of Brahat Samhita, he is talking of the Gandha Yukti, 
the, num, the various ways in which perfumes can be made. In this chapter, there is a discussion of combinatorics. There is also a discussion of certain interesting discussion of certain magic squares. So, the magic squares uh, topic will be taken up when that will be discussed in this course. So, he is talking of 16 basic perfumes Barahamihira and then as a first thing that if you want to make perfumes by choosing 4 out of these 16. So, how many possibilities are there and that is of course, the number of combinations that can be obtained by selecting 4 out of 16 and the standard 16 C 4. So, today we will calculate this by doing this right 16 factorial by 12 factorial 4 factorial. So, this is 13 into 14 into 15 into 16 by 1 into 2 into 3 into 4. So, you will finally, get that same number 1820. Shodashake Dravya Gadi, Chatur Vikalpena Bhidya Manana, Ashtadasha Jayante, Shatani Saitani, Vimshatya. So, when we have these 16 basic perfumes, the number of possibilities when we are choosing 4, they will be 1820. Now, a little later, Ramira tells you how to how he arrived at this 1820. For that, he is going to give you a meru, a meru very similar to what Pingala did, but still it is a different meru. The meru is stated in a half verse. And then in the other half words, Varahamira is discussing some other fairly complex topic. It is how to list all these possibilities. So, supposing you are calling this as just let me call them as perfume 1, perfume 2, etcetera, perfume 16. These are your perfumes. Now, you are choosing some 4. So, P 2, P 7, P 12, P 13 is one such possibility. But now, there are 1820 possibilities and as I said, once you have a combinatoric problem, you should give a rule to list all of them. So, a rule to list all these combinations and that is what is given. So, a 1820 row array and that is what is given in just this uh, half verse of Brahmira. The first half is discussing the Meru that uh, we see. So, as you can see, Brahmira is not much more prolix than Pingala that he gave the Meru in just the Sutra Pare Purnam Iti. So, he is giving you the Meru in just Purvena Purvena Gatena Yuktam Sthanam Vinantyam Pravadanti Sankhyam. So, one of the major commentaries on Varahamira's Vrath Samhita is by Bhattotpala. He has commented on Vrath Jataka also. So, Bhattotpala has explained in detail the construction of this Meru. So, in the first column, you just write the numbers 1 to 16. So, in the second column, you write some of these numbers. So, 1 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 21. Obviously, you do not need to do it that way. You have already summed up to 5, this is 15. So, 15 plus 6 is 21, 21 plus 7 is 28, 28 plus 8 is 36. So, like that you go on and so Purvena Purvena Gatena Yuktam is that you start from the beginning and keep on adding. Sthanam Vinantyam Pravadanti Sankhyam. So, you do not reach the last row, just finish before that. So, Sthanam Vinantyam Pravadanti Sankhyam. Now, the next column is sum of these sums. So, 1 is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, 1 plus 3 plus 6 is 10. 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 is 20. So, this column is done by sum of sum. This is 16 C 1, this is 16 C 2, this is 16 C 3 and finally, this is 16 C 4, which is again sum of the sum of the sums. So, that is the way of uh, doing this uh, calculating the number of combinations. So, um, again now, this thing is based upon a different recurrence relation the recurrence relation of Paramhira is this. N C R is sum of n minus 1 C R minus 1, n minus 2 C R minus 1, etcetera, R minus 1 C R minus 1. And you can just if you examine this, you can immediately see from this relation, Pingala's relation follows. 
from Pingala's relation, if you just expand n minus 1 C r once again using the same rule, this relation follows. So, both these are equivalent recurrence relations, but Varahamihira's Meru is different from Pingala's Meru. Both are simple ways of calculating the number n C r, but uh, this formula that n C r is uh, equal to various ways in which it is said right n into n minus 1 etcetera up to n minus r plus 1 by 1 into r. Uh, so, this is stated in mathematics books, this is stated in Dilavati, this is perhaps first stated in Ganita Sadha Sangraha. So, this format of uh, a formula for the N C R is given in the text of mathematics, they also deal with some combinatorics, but uh, in other contexts they are just giving you this tabular method and the table is equivalent to the formula. It is the table is based upon a certain recurrence relation and Pingalas was based upon this, Ramiras is based upon this. And this sum of sums is and this formula is a very, very important formula. Later on you will discover Narayan Pandita has discovered this formula for this repeated summation and that is at the basis of much of uh, uh, the initiation into calculus arises out of this formula. So, the entire all these ideas are implicit already in Varam Hira's Gandha Yukti in that Meru. Now, we go on to the study of Matra Vrittas. So, Matra Vrittas are again formed out of syllables only. Now, instead of counting the number of syllables, we will start counting the total value or in a loose sense the total time taken to pronounce the syllable. So, a lagu we will assign a value 1 and to guru we will assign a value 2. So, if you just take something like this, just take, take this lagu guru. So, this has 4 syllables and each of them is a lagu or if you take something like Ramachandra. So, this is guru, this is two, this is one, this is guru, this is lagu. Indra is a lagu, cha is a guru because it is followed by a conjunct consonant. So, in all there are 6 matras in it, there are 4 matras in it. So, this way of uh, doing poetry uh, is not very common in Sanskrit it became very, very common in all the regional languages in Kannada, in Telugu, in Hindi, in uh, Prakrit, essentially in Prakrit to start with and in many, many regional languages. The uh, meters, the prosody is based upon the matra vrittas, the number of matras that each pada is having and then you have a combination where you have different matra units in a single foot of a meter. So, Sanskrit also has that kind of a meter and the most famous example is Arya and the most famous example for mathematicians of a work uh, which has verses in Arya is the Arya Ashtashati or the Arya Bhatiya. Arya meter is a complex combination of matra units put together. It fixes the total number of matras in uh, total number of units in each of the padas composed of various matra units. There is something called the Vaitaliya meters also. So, all these are discussed by Pingala, but Pingala does not give a detailed discussion of just matra vrittas alone. Matra vrittas alone means you just fix the total number of matra, say each pada of your uh, verse has this number of matras. So, that is a much simpler sort of a problem. Pingala is discussing a more complex problem of prastara and things like that with Arya and Vaitaliya meters he called some of them gatha meters also. Anyway, let us come back to the definition of a matra meter I have already told you. We will repeat it once again. A matra meter is matra vritta is one where you assign value 1 to a lagu, you assign a value 2 to a guru and you look for all possible metrical forms of a total number of matras. So, suppose you had G L G as a portion, this has 5 matras. Now, 
how many such metrical forums are there which have five matras alone? Of course, the ultimate thing of course is L L L L L all lagus that is also five matras. Now, you have to list all the. So, the first question is to start with a prastara of all such matras, matra vrittas of a given matra and then start doing nashta, uddhishta and all the usual stuff that Pingala has told us that once you have a prastara what we should do. So, one of the most important earliest words on matra vrittas is a work in Prakrit. It is called vritta jati samuchaya. It is by Virahanka, whose name we will have to remember. You, we will soon see Virahanka is the originator of a set of numbers, which we commonly think are called by the name of Fibonacci. Therefore, Virahanka is going to appear very often in our discussion. He wrote this work around 6th century. There is a commentary by one Gopala in Sanskrit. Then more detailed discussion of Matra Vrittas appear in Hemachandra, he is a, a, one of the great scholars in Sanskrit and Prakrit. So, he has written Chandonu Shasana in 12th century. Then I mentioned Prakrita Pangala, Vani Bhushana, etcetera. We will quote some verses of these also for particular issue. So, first is the Prastara. So, before uh, going into the rule of the Prastara, let us just see some examples. So, one matra prastara is just a lagu. It cannot be a guru. Guru is two matras. So, the two matra prastara, there are only two possible vrittas, a single guru or two lagus. Three matras, LG, GL, LLL. So, what is the general rule for having a prastara of all such prastas? So, this is the simple words of uh, Nirahanka, Yesha eva prastaro, matra vrittanam sadhita kintu, matra yetra napuryate, prathamam sparsham tatra dehi. Sparsham means lagu, it is word for lagu. So, the rule for matra vritta prastara is the same as the rule for uh, uh, varna vritta prastara. Uh, and the in the end if the matra is not completing you just put a lagu i'll just explain it by considering say the four matra vritta prastara so you start with g's of course if it's five matras you cannot have all g's you have to have a l at the end so you start with all g's from the right and in the end if necessary put an l that has to be the starting row now what was the earlier rule from the left you start scanning, whenever you find a G put an L below, carry whatever is there to the right below. Earlier the rule was in the left fill it up with as many G's, there what you are filling up? The number of syllables were fixed, so you are filling up those many syllables. Now the syllables are not, number of syllables is not fixed, as you can see a 4 matra vritta can have 2 syllables, 3 syllables, it can have 4 syllables also. What is fixed is the total number of matras, the total value g is 2, l is 1. You add the number of g's and number of l's by that rule, that number should be the same. So, in some sense, it is what can be called as an ordered partition of the total matra by just 1 and 0, rather 1 and 2. So, at this stage, you have to add an l to have a total of 4 matras. Now, again start scanning from the left, you have a G here. So, next row you put an L here. In the left start putting G's and you cannot put many G's. In the end, you have to reach 4. So, you have to put an L. So, as I said, if necessary, put an L at the end. Next row, below this G put an L, bring down the L as it is, put a G in the left, it is over, 4 matras are finished. Again, come down, put an L below this, put L's in the right all that you can do is put an L in there. So, 5 matra vritta prastara similarly, so we can take something, suppose you had some row like this G L G G L G G something like this, how many matras are there? 2 plus 1 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12, this is in the prastara of the 12 matra vrittas. So, what do you do? Below the G you put an L, 
bring down whatever you have in the right as it is. But now the matras are not adding up, g has been reduced to an l, so I have to put an l in the left, that will be the next row. What will be the next row? Start scanning from the left, where g occurs put an l below, bring down the things to the right as they are. Now, how many matras have we finished? 2 plus 2, 4 plus 1, 5 plus 2, 7 plus 1, 8. So, we can put 2 g's to the left, because you are considering the vrittas of 12 matra length. Now, again start from the left, this will become l g, l g, l g g and you have to put an l to complete the total number of matra. So, like this you have to work out the prastara. So, the rule is the same as in the case of varna vritta. start scanning from the left, when you encounter a g put an l below, bring down the uh, syllables to the right as they are, in the left put as many g's as possible and if necessary add an l, such that the total number of matras is fixed at which you are the prastara for which you are the number of matras for which you are doing prastara. So, the 5 matra of the prastara is like this, it has 8 rows the 4 matra vritta prastara had 5 rows, the 3 matra vritta prastara had 3 rows, 2 matra vritta prastara had 2 rows. Okay. This is the 6 matra vritta prastara, start with g g g, end up with l l l l l l and this has 13 rows. So, immediately you can see there is a pattern, you have these g's here in the first 5 rows, you have these l's in the next 8 rows you go behind, this had 5 rows, this had 8 rows. So, all that you need to do to obtain the 6 matra vritta prastara is write the 4 prastara and write the 5 prastara below that, write 5 g's here, write 8 l's here. Obviously, because to the 4 matra vritta prastara, if you put a g on the right, it will become all 6. To the 5 matra vritta prastara, you add l to the right, it will all again become 6. So, the way to generate 6 is, the generate all the 4, generate all the 5, to the 4 you put a g on the right, to the 5 you put a l on the right, that will be prastara of vrittas of 6 matras and so you can see that the 5 is constructed out of 3 and 4 in a very similar way. There are 3 rows in the 3 matra vritta prastara, those are the same 3 here, those are the same 3 here or in the beginning, those are the same 3 here, you put a g to the right. There are 5 rows in the 4 matra vritta prastara, they are the same here, to that you put l, l on the right. So, this is the rule, so this is what our Virahanka is telling us, dvau dvau purva vikalpau ya mele itva jayate sankhya. Sa uttara matranam sankhyaya esha nirdeshaha. So, the number of rows in the n matra vritta prastara is given by the sum of the number of rows in the n minus 1 matra vritta prastara and the number of rows in the n minus 2 matra vritta prastara. Of course, we know that there is only one matra vritta of length. you hypothetically think of n s naught is equal to 1 and now you know what this recurrence relation means, this is the same recurrence relation by which what is called the Fibonacci sequence of numbers is generated and so these Sankhya's are just the s n is sum of s n minus 1 plus s n minus 2. Why? The n matra vritta prastara is generated by first writing down the n minus 2 matra vritta prastara, below that the n minus 1 matra vritta prastara, write n minus 2, uh, the Sn minus 2 number of g's there, write Sn minus 1 number of l's below and therefore, the number of possibilities of uh, metrical forms of total value n is Sn and those possibilities are Sn minus 1 plus Sn minus 2. And so, the Sankhyankas or the number of rows in the prastara of n matras are nothing but the numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 24, 55, 89, the numbers you are familiar.
in mathematics, this has been called Fibonacci sequence, because Fibonacci wrote down a problem concerning rats in his book. So, now how to do Nashta and Uddishta? So, we are going to call these numbers as Virahanka numbers and essentially you will find that these numbers play the major role. In fact, in understanding Nashta and Uddishta for the syllabic meters for the Varna Vrittas, the number of possible metrical forms was given by 2 to the power n and every number was represented as a sum of the powers of 2 and that is nothing but the what we now know as the binary representation of a number. Therefore, in doing going from the prastara to the row and from the row number back to the metrical forum, the binary representation was the thing that came off hand. So, to do the same kind of problem with matra vrittas, you will see that every number ultimately will be related to the virahanka numbers or what are so called Fibonacci numbers and they will play a role. So, what is the Uddishta problem? So, given a metrical forum, how do you find out the row in which it occurs in the prastara? So, the rule is for each g write two sankhyankas, the first one above and the second one below and for each lagu just write one sankhyanka above add all the Sankhyankas above the Gurus, this sum subtracted from the total Sankhyanka gives you the row number. Dattva Purva Yugankam, Guru Shirshankam, Vilupya Sheshanke, Ankai Rito Avashishtaihi, Shishtaihi Uddishtam Uddishtam. Okay. This is from a very small book called Vani Bhushana. Uh, the first chapter in about 20 verses discusses the rule of prastara of both the Varnavrittas and Matravrittas. This is written around 1500 AD I think by Damodara. So, an example will make it very clear. So, we can here uh, we will do another example on the board. Let us see this example. So, the Sankhyankas are these are the Sankhyankas that is these are the total numbers of the Matravrittas corresponding to each Matra value. So, for 1 matra it is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3, 4 is 5, 5 is 8, 6 is 13. So, this sequence the Virahanka sequence is to be written down. Now, your G L L G is 6 matras. So, this is a part of the 6 matra vritta prastara. So, write 6 sankhyankas, 2 for each guru, 1 for each lagu. The one that you are writing for guru write 1 above and 1 below write one above and one below, add the numbers above the guru, subtract it from the total number of metrical forums for 6 matras which is 13, what you what remains is the row number of G L L G in the matra vritta prastara 6 matra. So, let us go back to 6 matra vritta. So, G L L G is 4, that is the row that we have. So, we can take anything else. So, let us take some other example of 6 matras only L G L G. Let us find out which row it is in the 6 matra. So, again 1, 2, 3, 5, I am sorry, 8, 13, right. This is how the Sankhyankas have to be written. Sum the Sankhyankas above the Gurus subtract it from 13. So, that is equal to 3. So, actually this would be the row just L G L G. Now, what is the logic here will become clear a little bit uh, once we do the other process also. We did Uddishta first because the algorithm is very simple. Just write the Sankhyankas and add write 2 for each guru add the numbers above the guru and subtract it from the total sankhya you will immediately find. So, this is now being given to you like almost like a, a puzzle kind of thing how this is occurring. Let us see the 
other way that is the Nashta problem. And then we will be able to see some understanding of how this kind of an algorithm is arising. So, what is the Nashta problem? Given a number, we have to find out what is the Lagu Guru pattern in the Matravratta Prastara. So, take any number. If you want to compare it with what we did in the case of uh, Varnavrittas, what were we doing for Varnavrittas? If something like LG, LG we were talking about, so this will is a four syllable Varnavritta and what you did? You wrote 1, 2, 2 square, 2 cube, you added the number above the else and added 1 to it, that is where that occurred. So, the Sankhyankas for Varnavrittas played a crucial role in analyzing the Uddhishta problem for Varnavrittas. Now, we are doing it in a different way because the nature of matra vrittas is that syllables are not fixed, it is some of the values of that that is fixed. So, the mathematics of it becomes entirely different. Now, if you want to find out the morithmetic form associated with a given row number in the n matra prastara, first you write down n l's with the sequence of sankhyankas above them. Subtract the given row number from the last Sankhyanka S n. From the result, subtract S n minus 1 if possible, otherwise subtract S n minus 2 and so on till the end. The Moric form is obtained by looking at all those Sankhyankas which have been subtracted. So, as a statement of an algorithm, it is somewhat complicated, but if we look at an example, it will become very clear. It is also a fairly simple algorithm. So, seventh metrical form. So, first let me explain that looking at with the slide, then we will do another example on the board. So, the seventh metrical form in the sixth matra prastara again. So, write 7 L's, write the Sankhyanka 7, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Okay. Now, we want to find the seventh. Therefore, subtract this 7 from 13, what you are left with is 6. Now, with this 6, start looking at this from the right. What is the first number which can be subtracted from this 6? It is 5. So, this number 5, to use a word which we will be using later on in the combinatorics in music, you call that 5 as a patita sakya, a, a number which can be subtracted, which is subtractable. So, 5 is the first number which can be subtracted, 8 cannot be subtracted, 13 anyway there is no question because the number of rows are much less than, less than or equal to 13. So, 8 cannot be subtracted, 5 is subtractable, so 6 minus 1, 5 is 1. So, you highlight this 5, then the number on hand is 1, only this last 1 can be subtracted from that 1. So, there are only 2 numbers which are subtractable in that sequence of operations. So, there are two patita sankhyankas, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 apatita sankhyankas. Now, with each patita sankhyanka, the L below, you mix it with the L to the next, make it a G. The L below this other patita sankhyanka, you mix it with the next L and make it a G. Rest of the things, you leave them as they are. So, you will have a G here, you will have a G here. So, the metrical form is G L G L. So, G L G L is the seventh metrical form when you are uh, uh, the making the prastara six matra. So, let us take do some other example. So, let us do the ninth metrical form. So, again we have to do the same thing. So, seven lagus we write 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 4, the six matra prastara only. 13. Let us do a smaller number, so that you will have more may be. So, like in, let us do the second row of this. So, to start with you do 13 minus 2 is equal to 11. Now, 8 can be subtracted. And now, 
5 cannot be subtracted, but 3 can be subtracted. So, this is a patita, this is a patita, the rest are all apatita sankhyankas. So, each apatita sankhyanka, you combine the two yells and make it a guru, leave the rest of the lagus as they are. So, this form is yell gg. So, yell gg is the second row in the plus star of yes. LLGG is the second row in the. So, finally, what is happening? This number 13 minus 2 that is 11, you are writing it as 3 plus 8. Ultimately, this process is occurring by this decomposition of the number 11, this 13 minus 2, this number as 3 plus 8. And similarly, in that example that I had shown, what was happening? The number 6, we wrote it as 1 plus 5. Can you see something happening here? What is on the right hand side are the Virahanka numbers. So, every number below 13 can be written as a sum of the Virahanka numbers in a unique way if I put a certain condition and that fixes the link between the prastara and the metrical forum, the row number and the metrical forum, that link is uniquely fixed by that kind of a decomposition of the number. So, even the Uddhishta problem was very similar, the number 9 was represented as 1 plus 8. That was the way that Uddhishta problem was solved. So, the in the prastara to link the row number with the metrical forum, the mathematical principle that is operating is a certain decomposition of each of these numbers 1 to 13 as a sum of the Virahanka numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And that way of writing it is unique and that is what I am going to say it here. Every integer, so for any 0 less than or equal to n, less than or equal to s n or we can say all integers 0 less than or equal to any number k less than or equal to s n if you have this plus here. So, each number k is equal to sum s i 1 plus s i 2 plus etcetera, yes i r, where i 1, i 2, i r are all less than yes, are all less than n. So, take any Virahanka number, any integer less than that can be written as a sum of Virahanka numbers below that in a unique form as long as you put the condition that the Virahanka number should be non-consecutive. So, non consecutive means what? 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, right? These are the Virahanka numbers. These two are consecutive, these two are consecutive, these two are consecutive. So, ultimately, the entire mathematics of the Matra Vritta Prastara depends on a decomposition like this where every number is writable as a sum of the Virahanka numbers, uh, where the numbers are non-consecutive. So, every number is either a Virahanka number, 8 will have only representation as 8 or if it is not a Virahanka number, it can be uniquely written as a sum and that is what fixes you the row number or it gives you the metrical pattern, the way to go from one to the other and that is at the heart of the calculation. Now, last is Matra Meru and Vani Bhushana is saying Matra Meru Rayam Durga Sarve Shamati Durga Maha. <laughs> so, there is nothing Durga Maha about it, it is also very simple, only it is slightly more complex than Pingalas Varadameru. But what is the question? That in a, 
n matra vritta prastara, how many metrical forums are there with any particular number of gurus, three gurus or five gurus or any particular number of lagus. So, to answer that question, that was called the lagakriya question. So, for Pingala's case, it was very simple. The total syllables were fixed. Each syllable can be either guru or lagu. So, you are just picking out. So, how many eight syllable prastaras, uh, syllable varnavrittas are there with three lagus? That is eight C3. There is nothing more to be done. But this is a more complex thing, right? Let us see the prastara there. You will see let how the. So, look at this prastara. How many matravrittas are there with three gurus? There is only one. How many matravrittas are there with two gurus? It is here, it is here, it is here. So, it is three. And there is also one below here. There is one four, five, six. There are six. How many matravrittas are there with one guru? So, one here. One here, one here, one here. I think that is all. There are four. How many matra vrittas are there with zero gurus? There is just one. So, what about the lagus? How many six matra vrittas are there with one lagu? What is the answer? Zero. Because there cannot be a six matra vritta with one lagu or three lagu or five lagu. Because guru will give you a two. There has to be at least uh, two lagus to make six in all. So, whenever you have an even matra prastara, the number of lagus in that has to be even. When you have an odd matra prastara, the number of lagus there have to be odd. That condition does not apply to guru. So, like that, this problem is more complicated. It is not just uh, picking so many slots out of the total number of slots, but uh, this was also solved fairly early and this. Uh, Matra Meru was written down. So, this is the Matra Meru. So, what this Matra Meru is doing? This is just the total number of meters. Total number of meters with one matra is one, total number of meters with two matras is two, total number of meters with three matras is three, total number of meters with five matras is eight. We saw all that total number of meters with six matras is thirteen. So, these are all the Vidhanka numbers. So, any row of this Meru. So, first thing this Meru has unlike the simple Meru of uh, Pingala which had one row uh, first one entry in the first row, two entries in the second row, three entries in the third row, four entries in the fourth row. This goes in a more complex way. First row is one entry, second and third rows have two entries, four and fifth rows have two entries, three entries, sixth and seventh row have four entries like that. So, two two rows have the same number of entries. Then what other pattern you can see? It has one in the end and if these two entries that you are having, the top one is always one. That is also simple to see. The bottom one is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like that. That also we are able to see. If you want to see something more, then you have to take it from me. 10 is given by 4 plus 6. 15 is given by 10 plus 5, 6 is given by 5 plus 1, 21 is given by 15 plus 6. You go up one step, then you go across by one step, the sum of those two. So, that is the recurrence relation. Now, what are these numbers? So, let us take the 6 matra vritta, 6 matra vritta prastara. So, there is one metrical forum with 0 L, 6 metrical forums with 2 L, 5 metrical forums with 4 L and one metrical forum with 6 L. Other way of talking about it, there is one metrical forum with 3 G, 6 metrical forums with 2 G, 5 metrical forum with 1 G and one metrical forum with 0 G. So, each row of this matra meru is giving you how many different meters are there with a given number of lagus. It is also giving you how many meters are there with a given number of gurus. So, how did they arrive it? Now, first, how did they describe this Meru? Dvayam dvayam samam koshtam kritva antyeshu ekam arpayet. Ekadvika trikachatu kramena prathameshwapi. Shishankapta parankabhyam shesha koshtan prapurayet. Matra Meru rayam durgaha. 
Sarvesham Ati Durga Maha. So, this is Vani Bhushana. So, they have 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. number of cells in each row, one in top of each row and the end of each row, put 2, 3, 4 and finally, Shirshankapta Parankabhyam Shesha Koshthan Prapurayet. That is how he is explaining to you the recurrence relation which we are now going to discuss. So, the question is, if you have an n matra vrta prastara, how many matra vrtas are there with i gurus? This is the question, right? So, how do we understand this? If there are i gurus, the total matras are n. So, i gurus will have 2 i value. So, the, what is the value left out? n minus 2 i. Therefore, if there are i gurus and we have uh, n matras, so we have n minus 2 i lagus. So, we have n minus 2 i lagus. So, when we have i gurus, we will have n minus 2 i lagus. This is fixed. i gurus is fixed, total matras n is fixed. So, if we have i gurus, there has to be n minus 2 i lagus. Now, add these two, you have n minus i syllables. So, all those matra vrittas which have i gurus have n minus i syllables and i of them are gurus. How many possibilities? n minus i c i. So, that will tell you the number of matra vrittas of value n which have i gurus. So, I will repeat if you have an n matra vritta prastara, it has i gurus then it should have n minus 2 i lagus because gurus have value 2. So, the total number of syllables also is fixed it will become n minus i syllables. So, you have n minus i syllables of which i will be gurus. How many possibilities are there? n minus i c i and this i has to be less than or equal to n by 2. If you have n matra vritta prastara, you cannot have more than n by 2 gurus. Each guru has value 2. Therefore, you have this relation. This is the number of matra vrittas of n matras with i gurus and you can straight away see they will satisfy this recurrence relation. G i n is g i n minus 1 plus g i minus 1 n minus 2. So, this number is the number above plus the number diagonally across to the right. 56 is 35 plus 21, 35 is 15 plus 20. So, that is how this matra meru is constructed and it is one of the most beautiful constructions in combinatorics in ancient Indian mathematics. And a very nice combinatorial problem solved brilliantly. So, this was the first complexity that arises once you go from Pingalas, uh, fixed number of syllables and uh, only Lagu Guru being there to a situation where fixed amount of total value where Guru has value 2, Lagu has value 1. So, the number of syllables is not fixed, the total value is fixed. So, you do all the same things, you do Prastara, Nashta, Uddishta and Lagakriya. So, this is the beautiful mathematics of combinatorics developed in connection with the uh, matra vrittas and much of it is buried in literature and hardly discussed in mathematical literature in modern times. I mean the older mathematicians did know what was being discussed. So, with this we will come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you very much.